So Daniel Levy, the Tottenham chairman, for anybody out there that doesn't know, um, doesn't speak very frequently. I've met him on a number of occasions in 20 plus years here uh, in London. I've always found him very decent to deal with. But yeah, he's he's a tough customer. Of course he is. And I remember that around the time that he was holding out and holding out and holding out in his dealings with uh, Real Madrid regards the sale of Gareth Bale. And why wouldn't he? So he's been talking to the students at the Cambridge Union. Let's pick over the bones of this, Simon. Here we go. He was asked if Spurs are sacrificing on-field success for off-field investment. I guess my starting point is I don't agree with it because if you look at um, the amount of money that Tottenham has spent on new players over the last five or ten years and you compare it with certain other clubs in the Premier League, not only have we exceeded those clubs, but actually... Um, some of those clubs may well have been more successful than us on the pitch. There is not necessarily a direct link between the amount of money you spend and getting success on the pitch. Invariably, it's what you spend it on. And I can name, I won't name, but we could all name probably in here, uh, a number of players that Tottenham has bought um, have, that have not been successful and we've lost an awful lot of money. It's been an incredible journey. You know, in, the, in the 22 years, Tottenham has progressed enormously in that time period not as much as as, fa- as a fan we would hope mm. but um, hopefully it's, the journey's not over and we're still hoping that we're going to get that trophy which we need You do Daniel and you know that that was all quite balanced and fair was it not Sam? Um, well there is a direct link between money and success he's right to say how that money's deployed Well but Bowley's a, proved that's not the case Well currently he has yes but De Bowley's been in situ for six or seven months um nine months, let's say, for the purpose of this conversation, um, and has yet to really understand the dynamics of the football field, not 22 years like Daniel has. Um, And Man City and Chelsea, in previous incarnations, have proved the direct link between having an enormous amount of money and a successful team. It is obvious that how you deploy money, and probably he's referencing Everton, that's probably who he was referencing about their spend pattern, and it's not... Daniel shouldn't take solace from the argument that money and and success aren't directly related because it's how you spend it, because that will make the argument that if he spent a lot of money, which he's alluding to, that he hasn't spent it very well. And that isn't a badge of honour for Daniel, is it? It's a a reasoned argument. It'll deal with the Cambridge Union in terms of young students with hungry minds wanting to listen to Daniel Levy talk about the business of football. But when you look at it and say, that's great, you spent a lot of money, but on your watch, that money hasn't been spent well because there are teams that are successful that have spent less money than you and being successful and there are teams that have spent more money than you that have been successful and by the definition of success I think the question is Daniel what is your definition of success? <laughs> yeah. That's the question isn't it? Yes, yeah, that is the question He went on he, he went on to speak about reports of investors wanting to buy Tottenham Hotspur as a club Eni Cohen's approximately 87% of the club we have 30,000 shareholders most of who are fans that own the shares and we have a duty to consider any proposals that anyone wants to make. All I would say is we're not in negotiations with anybody, nor have we been over recent months, and all the stuff that has been in the newspapers is completely untrue. Oh, so it was untrue. Uh, They're not talking to anybody. What do you think? Um, People well, are course, knocking on his well, door all the time, well, surely. Well, of course he has a duty to the minority shareholders. That's a matter of fact. It's a fiduciary responsibility. But the fact they own 87.5% dictates the terms of any conditionality around a deal, and you, they won't be doing anything unless it suits the 75% majority shareholders, which is Daniel and Joe Lewis and the Enoch Group. Um, so with that in mind, Tottenham Hotspur, Daniel said to me a while ago that when we talked about this £3.5 billion offer, that he wouldn't get people in the side door, let alone the front door. So that tells you where he thinks Spurs are. How you square that circle, I don't know, because it's difficult to make um, the justification for three and a half billion quid for Tottenham Hotspur, who don't operate at the top end of football recognition in terms of worldwide eyes on the prize, achievements and outcomes. Yes, they have got the best stadium in the world, no doubt about it. They've probably got one of the best training grounds in the world. But that's all fur cut and no knickers. They need to win competitions to elevate their 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 relationship with the world's audience, and then their inherent value will become greater. So I do like the balance to be struck between having the infrastructure and, of course, winning things. Because what's the point of having the best stadium? What's the point of that if you're not going to put a team inside it that's befitting of the best stadium? Yeah. And right now they haven't. And there's an argument. Daniel will make the argument. The direction of travel for 22 years has been far far better than his predecessors. This is now a stable. Uh, commercially well-run football club. But in the business of football, that has to also equate 
to a successful football club. And again, the question must abound. What is success to Daniel? In part, it's being in the Champions League. Alongside that, because of the visceral nature of sport and the fact that it defies commerciality, it's driven by emotion. You can't not have emotion involved. And emotion goes with winning things. Yeah. Tottenham fans want to see something won. Sure, Daniel of course. Job is to get them something won. Well, the old students weren't finished there because we got onto the subject of Harry Kane and Daniel spoke about Harry. He can absolutely win a trophy at Spurs. But, you know, being, being a legend is also important. You know, the fact that he's the top scorer uh, for, for Tottenham Hotspur, he's making history. Um, and, you know, I hope one day that there's a statue of Harry Kane outside our stadium. A statue of Harry outside the stadium. Mm. Well, I suppose Spurs fans would stand in front of that and get their pictures taken yeah. for sure because they love him. But uh, is, it, is it very important that Harry's regarded as a legend? If that's what they want to do. I mean, they put a statue of Michael Jackson outside the Fulham ground for what that was worth. <laughs> the bottom line is, is that, uh, you know, Daniel is talking in sound bites there and talking about platitudes about he wants... Daniel, uh, Harry Kane to be successful for his football team and legend status okay if that's part of Daniel's belief system then fine you know I, I, I think primarily Harry Kane is part of a team that has been unsuccessful and he's been a contributing factor to that as well because there are big games in big times when Harry Kane has been non-visible Mm. Uh, and not done the job that he would, uh, what one would have expected him to but do. The but the kind of words that we heard Levy use there about Harry, will he use those exact same words in a contract negotiation with Harry? Oh, well, they're two different things. You know, I don't think Harry Kane is going to the poorhouse anytime soon. I don't think Harry Kane, in in terms of remuneration, is 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 you know not inside the highest echelons of of reward in the Premier League because I believe him to be so. You know, he is very, very well paid. Yeah. And that's fine because he scored a lot of goals. And the the use of words like legend, I don't, as a commercial animal that looks at the football clubs in a certain way, has the same emotion, I don't like banding around terms like legend. I let the fans do that. I let the media do that. I think when owners start doing it, you start falling into the scenario of trying to please people because Daniel will view Harry Kane in a certain way, which is there to do a job. He's the captain of the side. Yeah. Whether he believes he's a good leader or not, I don't know, but he's the captain of the side. Sure. And so with that in mind, those are playing to the gallery sort of comments. I wouldn't be sat there talking about my players as legend status. I'll be sat in there turning around and saying they've been absolutely fantastic for the football club. I've looked after them, they've looked after me, and long may that continue. Sure. And I agree with you totally about the overuse of the word legend. I mean, it's gone from a man pulling a sword from a stone yeah. to a family member unexpectedly coming home with crisps.